Hello, I hope you guys have watched my previous video where I throw some light on mobile frontal as a concept and how it can be deployed in today's radio access networks. In this video, I'll talk about Cisco's packet frontal implementation on NCS 540FH. I've already written a blog about this topic which you can find linked in the description. But this video won't really be a marketing pitch of our solution, it will be much more than that. I'll pick a hypothetical RAN deployment very close to reality and explain how you can tie all the pieces together to make the packet front hall work seamlessly. Let us consider a converged front hall deployment at a macro cell site. There is a need to carry both 4G and 5G resources using the same front hall routers. This is a standard three sectors deployment with each sector serviced by both LTE and NR radios. The configuration of the homogeneous LTE radios for the 2.1 GHz spectrum is 4 cross 4 MIMO using 10 MHz of channel bandwidth for both uplink and downlink. The configuration of homogeneous NR radios for the N78 or 3.5 GHz spectrum is 4 cross 4 MIMO using 80 MHz of channel bandwidth for both uplink and downlink. Our first step, as I had explained in my deploying the front hall series router, is to calculate the front hall bandwidth that we need to provision on our front hall router. Let us use this table to calculate the maximum number of AXEs that is required to be transported on a 4G front hall. To be able to support 4 cross 4 MIMO on 10 MHz of channel bandwidth over 3 sectors, we need 12 AXEs and that can be further supported with SIPRI using at least option 7 or 9.8 Gbps of SIPRI data rate. As an assumption, let us consider there are 6 LTE radios over the 3 sectors each carrying the same AXEs as mentioned before. This means we will need 6 cross SIPRI radio links on our front hall routers. Now coming to the NR part, this is something I haven't really discussed in our previous videos. But I will flash a calculator built by one of our Cisco architects, Michel Appelman, and this will help us capacity plan our 5G interfaces. This kind of a calculator is also available online, I'll link the same in the description. I'm going to use this one though as I'm more comfortable with it. Let us give 80 MHz of channel bandwidth and 4 MIMO layers as the inputs here to derive our front hall bandwidth. You can see the resultant per radio front hall bandwidth for 3 sectors is coming to 12.22 Gbps. This particular number can be justified with a simple concept of statistical multiplexing where you don't really have peak traffic at a cell site all the time. There will be busy hours where multiple users will be connected to a cell site and receiving an average data rate on their user equipment and then there will be quiet hours where a single user might be connected to a cell site and receiving peak data rate on his or her mobile device. To account for this possibility, we are operating with the two average and one peak data rate assumptions across the three sectors deployed at this cell site. Now that we have the bandwidth requirements for both LT and NR, we should be able to capacity plan our front hall interface between the cell site router and the aggregation router sitting at a central hub or a far edge data center as we call it nowadays. Before we get into that interface, there is a small catch with the calculation we have done so far. In NR, we have Ethernet traffic, so we are good to carry that 12.22 Gbps on the front hall interface. But what about LT? That is still not Ethernet or packet traffic. The 6 cross SIPRI radio links that we calculated earlier is essentially constant bit streams. So we still need to packetize that to be able to carry it over a packet network. IEEE 1914.3 or radio over Ethernet technology is used to packetize SIPRI bit streams. ROE provides mapping and tunneling technologies, namely structure agnostic, structure aware, and native mappers to be able to packetize constant bitrate radio traffic at the cell site. In our front hall routers, we will use either ROE structure agnostic mapper type 0 or type 1 to packetize SIPRI, convert it to Ethernet packets, and carry it over our front hall network using either L2VPN VPWS or EVPN VPWS on an IGP plus SRMPLS based data plane. If we are using ROE SA mapper type 0, the total bandwidth requirement on the core or front hall interface is 6 cross 10.23 Gbps which is 61.4 Gbps. This increased data rate is due to ROE headers, Cisco custom headers and MPLS headers added to the original bit stream. You can essentially call these packetization overhead. 
Now there is a way to reduce the front hull bandwidth using RV SA Mapper Type 1 as instead of tunneling all 10 bits of IQ data, we are going to map them to 8 bits in a front hull network and then demap them back to 10 bits while depacketizing it on the aggregation router at the FEDC. This will lead to a bandwidth savings of at least 20% on the front hull network in the case of 8-bit, 10-bit encoding. Coming back to our original deployment, this will mean with type 1 mapping, the calculated front hull bandwidth will be 49.5 Gbps. Now, if you didn't have NR at this cell side, we could carry this traffic using 2 cross 25 Gbps links. Now, though we need to carry 73.6 Gbps of traffic, if we have implemented type 0 mapper or 61.7 Gbps of traffic with a type 1 mapper implementation. In either scenario, we will have to use 1 cross 100 Gbps front hull link. You could argue about having 3 cross 25 Gbps links, but then it is better to keep some buffer for future deployments. I really hope that you guys have got a very good understanding of how to capacity plan slash design your front hull network after watching this video. We have spoken quite a bit about access technologies in this one. We will talk about a few key transport concepts like QoS, slicing, SRPM, SRT, TILFA in my next video. And that will provide some resiliency, efficiency and control over our frontal network elements. Uh, thank you for watching this. I will see you in the next one. Oh, wait, wait. If you've come this far, kindly drop a like on this video that triggers the YouTube algorithm and it'll help me take this video to a wider audience. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Bye-bye and take care.